Welcome to the OnlyFans Secrets Marketing Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help both new and established OnlyFans creators learn the basics of online branding, marketing, and promotion to help you make more money with your content and maximize your time online. My name is Richard Lewis, and I have over 20 years of internet marketing experience. So let's get started with today's topic. And that topic is OnlyFans Secure the Bag Icons, Madam C.J. Walker. So once again this week, we are going to highlight an individual whose knowledge and inspiration can help you secure your bag uh, for the long term on OnlyFans. This week, we are going to talk about Madam C.J. Walker, the first self-made female millionaire in the United States. Okay, so who is Madam C.J. Walker and why should you care about her? Okay, so she is an entrepreneur, business innovator, and human rights activist. Her real name is Sarah Breed Love, and she was born December 23rd, 1867 in Delta, Louisiana. She was one of the youngest of five children, and she was the first child to be born free after the Emancipation Proclamation. And she went from being a laundress to the owner of her own manufacturing company. Okay, so let's look into her life. So it's a very interesting and tragic life, much like the last few um, icons we've talked about, but hers is particularly uh, tragic in, in a lot of ways. So her older siblings were enslaved on the plantation that she was born on. Um, her mother died when she uh, was five years old of cholera, and her father died a year later. So she was orphaned at age seven, and she moved to Mississippi to then live with her older sister. So she only had three months of formal education uh, from a church when she was very young. And she married at the age of 14 and had a daughter at the age of 18 and then was widowed at 20. So her husband died when she was 20 and now she had a a two-year-old daughter at that time. So in 1906, she married for the third time to a newspaper advertising salesman. And this man's name was uh, Charles Joseph Walker, um, hence the name C.J. Walker surname that she used. And she lived in St. Louis uh, with him and worked as a laundress. Now, uh, much like many people at the time, um, she suffered from dandruff, scalp ailments, baldness, And this was due to the harsh products that people used at the time to cleanse their hair and wash their clothes. Um, Also, a lot of people at this time didn't have indoor plumbing. um, So it was a very difficult time to maintain yourself and your personal hygiene to begin with. So she learned hair care from uh, her brothers uh, who were uh, barbers and she became a commission agent uh, selling products for the Poro Company, uh, which was founded by uh, a woman named Annie Malone. Um, And she learned and developed her own product line while working uh, for that Poro Company. So at age 37, she moved to Denver. She started her own hairdresser and uh, seller of cosmetics creams business. Uh, At that point, she went door to door uh, teaching other African-American women how to grow and style their hair. Now, at that point, then she moved to Pittsburgh and she established a college to train uh, hair culturists, um, opening training programs for licensed agents who then earned commissions. Now, if you listen to our last 
um, icon, uh, Mary K. Ash. Uh, this will sound very familiar to you, uh, as this was uh, also something that uh, Mary K. Ash did. Now, at this point, then, she moves to Indianapolis, and she establishes her own manufacturing company. So this is both a factory, a hair salon, uh, and a beauty school to train her agents. So at, also her management staff at this time was mainly women, and she employed several thousand women. And it's estimated that she trained up to 20,000 women uh, at this school. And she showed other African-American women, um, you know, not just how to style hair and, you know, makeup and such and cosmetics, but she also uh, taught them how to budget, build businesses of their own, and become financially independent. So she died in 1920, uh, just as the company was expanding so a pretty young age to die. And the company ended up expanding into the Caribbean, into Cuba, Jamaica, etc. And so her fame became even greater after her death. Okay, so let's go back over her life. As I mentioned, quite uh, trying. Um, so you can imagine um, being born in 1867 right after the end of slavery in America, um, you know, her opportunities were already uh, kind of small. Um, and then to then be widowed, or I'm sorry, to be orphaned uh, at such a young age and to have very few educational opportunities um, you, it kind of uh, makes you ask the question of uh, what else could she have accomplished with um, even more opportunities at education, uh, but she did not have that. Um, and then, you know, being married, you know, at the age of uh, 14, and she had a daughter then at 18, and widowed at 20. And, you know, the if you listened last time on the Icons episode, just the parallels between her and Mary Kay Ash is, is a lot. There is a lot there. Um, this is a very similar story uh, that you're, you know, that we heard before. Um, someone who had, you know, married young, um, you know, and then ended up getting a divorce, you know, or being widowed or not having um, a husband after that, and then you know, going through kind of a, a series of marriages afterwards. And it's also interesting that she married, you know, a, a newspaper advertising salesman. I don't know if you ever remember that Mary Kay's um, husband initially helped her, you know, with the marketing and the business end. Uh, and, it, you know, this is the same for uh, Charles Joseph Walker, who also assisted um, uh, Madam C.J. Walker. And, uh, the, ter the term madam, by the way, comes from uh, how people referred to, uh, you know, cosmologists in France at the time. So she took that moniker on uh, from that. And also, you know, that she moved around so very much is very interesting. You know, at each point in her life where she needed to upgrade um she moved along, you know what I mean? She did not uh, sit in the same place. Uh, she looked for where, you know, as I've talked about, like the, the ground was most fertile and she moved from place to place. You know, it's it's interesting. She's She moves from the deep south then to St. Louis and then all the way out to Denver and then back to Pittsburgh and you know, what you're looking at here is, is that these places had the opportunity for her to uh, grow. And this is where she seems to, uh, to move. And um, she also personally had the problems 
that she went to solve. So she had a lot of these problems with hair care, pro, you know, issues with dandruff and a dry scalp. And she was looking to solve her own problems. And for many people, when they start businesses, being able to relate to your customer directly uh, is a huge advantage. You are your own customer. You are solving your own problem or scratching your own itch, as a lot of people say. So it's very helpful. And then she also went very similar to Mary Cash. And obviously, Madam C.J. Walker predates Mary Cash. So really, Mary Cash <laughs> seemed to be doing the same things Madam C.J. Walker was doing in the past. But since we talked about her in the last episode, that's why I'm referencing it that way. But um, very similar that she went and worked uh, underneath someone who was more established for a little period of time, was able to learn the system. Um, you know, it's not just about having the best idea or the best product. It's the delivery. It's how you deliver and the system by which you deliver, you know, the product by. And so Madam C.J. Walker was able to learn from Annie Malone um, who was another successful African-American businesswoman at the time um, in the same exact industry and was probably able to look and see what she wasn't doing right. And I'll, I'll tell you that honestly from a, a business perspective of someone who's been an entrepreneur, one of the greatest things you can do is go and work for a company uh, that you have interest in and see all the things they're doing wrong. Uh, because you'll learn more there because of the daily frustration, especially if you're working under someone um, and you're not seeing the kind of competence that you know you'd bring to to bear. Uh, if you were in that position, it's a great teacher. So she was able to learn. And when she moved to Denver, she was still working um, for the Poro Company. And so she started then as a hairdresser, an independent hairdresser, and seller of cosmetics. So she didn't go right into the dream. You know, she didn't go, okay, well, I'm just going to jump right into the factory and all this. You can see the step-by-step approach that she's taking here. So she's learning the skill, and then now she's taking it into practice. So she goes door-to-door also something that Mary Kay Ash did and that many and that our previous before even that Zig Ziglar did. So we have three for three on the door to door sales. Uh, and that, as I mentioned, is as lost now, especially during the pandemic. It's, you know, it's not advisable to become a door to door salesman uh, or woman. But, you know, this is a huge, great teacher because you're going out directly interacting. So she's interacting then with uh, women uh, and showing them how to groom and style their hair. And I'll tell you one thing, you learn just as much teaching as the person that is being taught. So when she goes out, she's taking in, she's listening and seeing what her customers and potential customers have and what they don't have. When you're going door to door, you're selling something, but you're going to learn what's missing. So if she's selling uh, Poro company products and there's a product that's missing, but she's on the ground. And when you're on the ground, you hear everything. You hear what's, you know, what's not out there. So if someone is far away, you know, selling a product and they're selling it across, you know, different channels, they're not on the ground. And I'll tell you, and I've mentioned this before in different episodes of the podcast about staying on the ground when you're doing your, your marketing, your promotion for your OnlyFans. You know, you can set everything to automated and you can have everything running in your marketing, but nothing beats going on to the different social channels every day and seeing what's hot. You know, talking to your customers, talking to people on your OnlyFans, seeing the trends and fads that are coming along and acting on them. And when you are on the ground, like what Madam C.J. Walker is doing here, she's hearing that. And perhaps uh, Annie Malone was not hearing that. So she's hearing what 